Balmiki, the ascetic, questioned the eloquent Narada. Is there a man in the world today who is truly virtuous? Who is there, who's mighty and yet knows both what is right and how to act upon it? Who always speaks the truth and holds firmly to his vows? Who exemplifies proper conduct and is benevolent to all creatures? Who is learned, capable and a pleasure to behold? Who is self-controlled having subdued his anger, who is both judicious and free from envy, who, when his fury is aroused in battle, is feared even by the gods. This is what I want to hear, for my desire to know is very strong. Great seer, you must know of such a man. When Narada, who was familiar with all the three worlds, heard Valmiki's words, he was delighted. Listen, he replied, and spoke these words. The many virtues you have named are hard to find. Let me think a moment, sage, before I speak. Hear now of a man who has them all. His name is Rama, and he was born in the house of Ikshavaku. Ramayana, literally Rama's long walk or the gesture of Rama, recounts the history of the boundless qualities of Prince Rama, who is an incarnation of the god Vishnu. The Ramayana is a masterpiece of Indian literature, a fundamental Vedic text. Transmitted orally throughout the generation, the Ramayana has also been the subject of several versions written over the courses of the centuries. The most famous is the version attributed to Valmiki, written in Sanskrit around the 11th century. In his account, Valmiki does not present himself as someone who merely tells a story, but as someone who listens, perpetuating the tradition of oral transmission. The Ramayana contains 24,000 slokas or couplets, or 48,000 verses, which are dispersed between seven cantos. It is the Adikavya, or the first poem. In order to render the richness of this complex narrative, Valmiki uses an extremely refined poetic language. According to the legend, while Valmiki happily watches two curlies in love, cheerfully splashing about, the male is suddenly pierced by an arrow. Overwhelmed, Valmiki prepares to cast a curse on the hunter but finds that he is only able to utter admirable phrases. Since Nishada, you kill one of this pair of Kranyakas, distracted at the height of passion, you shall not live for very long. After which, the god Brahma appears to him and invites him to write the story of Rama in an identical verse style. The divine origin of the text reinforces the essential religious dimension of the Ramayana and displays affiliations with gods and humans. With the Mahabharata, the Ramayana forms a sort of Brahmanism charter, thus forming the origins of Hinduism. The Ramayana begins when the god Vishnu incarnates the body of Rama, the oldest son of Dasaratha, the king of the city of Ayodhya. Rama must then battle in human form the demon Ravana, the king of the evil Rakshasa, who is invincible against the gods. The first canto tells of the childhood of Rama and his brothers, and ends with the marriage of Rama to Sita, the daughter of the king of Janaka. The king had promised to marry his daughter to whoever would dominate the bow of Shiva. Rama managed to draw the bow and shatter it. He thus married Sita with sumptuous ceremonies, during which three brothers of Rama married the three sisters of Sita. The second canto begins with the return of the princes and their spouses to Ayodhya, where, conforming to tradition, Dasaratha decides to make his oldest son Rama heir to the throne. Restrained by Kaiki, one of his wives, the king renounces the promised throne to Rama in lieu of his son Bharata, and Rama is obliged to live in exile in the forest for 14 years. 
He leaves accompanied by Sita and Lakshmana, all dressed in ascetic clothing. Canto 3, Aranyakanda, describes their ascetic lives in the Dandanka forest. Their stay in the heart of nature appears to be idyllic, until Sita is taken by Ravana, the king of the demons. Ravana, with his accomplice Marika, in the form of a golden antelope, lead Rama and Lakshmana away from Sita. Ravana then locks Sita in his palace garden on the island of Lanka. Rama, in complete despair, weeps for Sita and leaves with Lakshmana in search of her. In the fourth canto, Kishkinda, the brothers meet Sugriva, the king of the monkeys, and Hanuman, the strongest and most courageous of the monkeys. The princes make a pact with them to help them find Sita. In Canto V, the monkeys confide the mission of going to Lanka, where Ravana has sequestered Sita to Hanuman. Because of his exceptional strength, Hanuman is able to leap across the ocean and land on the island. He then enters Ravana's palace and explores each room. He finally finds Sita in an Ashoka grove. She is in despair and emaciated from fasting. She has also been harassed by Ravana, who constantly impels her to concede to his advances. On seeing me, lady with thighs like elephants' trunks, you cover your breasts and stomach, as if in your fear you wish to make yourself invisible. I long for you, wide-eyed lady. Dear lady, you are endowed with every bodily perfection, stealer of all men's hearts, Please look upon me with favor. For timorous women, making love to other men's wives and even carrying them off by force is perfectly appropriate behavior for Rakshasas. Let there be no doubt about this. Hanuman reassures Sita. He gives her Rama's ring as a sign of recognition. When Hanuman returns from his expedition and tells Rama about his meeting with Sita, the monkey army, under the command of Rama and Lakshmana, leave for Lanka. In order to cross the ocean, they construct an enormous dike by throwing boulders and tree trunks into the ocean. The totality of Canto VI, Yudhakanda, is devoted to the gigantic war and bloody battles at Lanka between the armies of the monkeys and the bears led by Rama and that of the Rakshasa led by the dangerous Ravana. Rama and Lakshmana are wounded and Hanuman leaves to search for medicinal plants in the Himalayas. He finally decides to take the entire summit of the mountain where the plants are growing in order to bring them back to the battlefield as quickly as possible. At the end of the battle, in a fight opposing their divine weapons, Ravana is killed by Rama and Sita is liberated. But Rama begins to doubt her chastity after her long confinement. In her defense, Sita throws herself into a fire and re-emerges alive, a sign of her perfect purity. Rama returns to Ayodhya with his wife and brother in Ravana's Pushpaka chariot, accompanied by all the monkeys and bears. In Canto 7, Uttarakhanda, Rama reigns and lives happily in Ayodhya with Sita, who is pregnant. However, hearing that the citizens of Ayodhya have doubts regarding Sita's fidelity during her confinement with Ravana, he decides to repudiate her. He asks his brother Lakshmana to take her into the forest and abandon her. There, she is taken in by the sage Valmiki. She soon gives birth to Rama's twins, Kusa and Lava. Years later, during a large party held at Ayodhya, Rama's children come to sing their story. Rama recognizes them and, overwhelmed, demands to find Sita. In front of her husband, to prove once and for all her innocence, she decides to return to Earth. The Ramayana ends when Lakshmana takes his life in the waters of the river. After 10,000 years of rain, Rama will jump into the Sairayu River to return to the heavens in the form of Vishnu. All of his brothers, his subjects, and the monkeys joyfully follow him. Only Hanuman remains on earth with the mission to sing the praises of Rama. Today, we have the pleasure of presenting the entire text of the Ramayana by Valmiki in the new translation from Sanskrit to English by Robert Goldman, Sheldon Pollock, Rosaline Lefebvre, and Sally Sutherland Goldman. 
the work, of which six volumes have already been published by Princeton University Press, and the seventh, currently being translated, is the only translation based on the critically edited text of the poem, produced according to scientific principles, and renowned for its poetry and language. The fruit of an immense research, this luminous epic is extensively illustrated by 700 Indian miniatures from the end of the 16th to the beginning of the 19th century. Ten years of research were necessary to identify, find and assemble, image by image and manuscript by manuscript, the largest existing collection of miniatures from the Ramayana. More than 5,000 miniatures were found in private and public collections worldwide. To find these images was and always is a challenge but also a great joy. The pleasure to find beautiful works of art, discover museums in India and around the world, and most passionate collectors are just some of the adventures that have made this unique edition of Indian art possible.